Gibson Hummingbird guitar from 2008. It was made in Bozeman, Montana, U.S. of A. It's an artist style hummingbird. And I relieved the neck, I loosened the truss rod to get it about where it would, you know, typically be once I get the neck reset. We want a tall bridge. Maybe not exactly this tall, but somewhere in this ballpark of tallness. That one's pretty tall. But when I put the proper relief in the neck and put in the tall bridge, I end up with action that is at about four millimeters, which is 10 64ths, 11 64ths of an inch. And I want it to be down here around four for this guy. He really likes low action. So I did the calculation and I want to take off uh, 0.8 millimeters from the heel. So we'll steam this and we'll get the neck off and we'll change the neck angle. Put it back together and see how our action's looking. Stick around for the fun times. Should also note how this guitar sounds. These are old strings. Actually, this string is a brand new string. These ones are old. The new one sounds pretty bright. The old one sounds a little dull. But yeah. This is pretty much what it's going to sound like when it uh, when the neck gets reset. I might find that there's some things loose on the inside. I'm going to get it apart and check everything out. So there's the heat lamp. Let's swivel over. You can see right there's the heat lamp. There's my protection. After about 10-12 minutes, I was able to get in there and separate that fingerboard extension from the body with various knives and blades. So it's all the way loose. I also like to use <clears throat> little thin sheets of plastic like that so I can slide in and out without scratching the lacquer. Now we'll proceed to pull a fret out of it. Gibsons there. and the Martins have a pretty stout dovetail. I start about a quarter inch from the edge and instead of angling it this way, I angle it back that way slightly and a little bit slightly inward. Um, backwards drilling. And there's the pocket. That's a Once I get the tiny drill bit, the pilot hole, so I know where the pocket is for sure, just making sure where the pocket is, I get this bigger bit. Yep. You can vacuum that out. I can also take like an E string and stick it down in there and make sure that we got a nice big pocket to steam through. All right, let's get that steam going. You see, um, there's a bunch of steam coming out the hole where the end pin or the strap button was. I think I'll plug that up with a, with a little small dowel before I steam any further and shoot a little steam in there. That way it stays down in there. My steamer is not a continue on continuous. You have to press it on and off. Yep. 
and then I can kind of rest my line right there. Put a little more wax on it. They really didn't use that much glue. This one, there's just not that much uh, cleanup to do. I see a little bit of what looks like regular yellow wood glue right there. Just right there, but I mean here, it just kind of all dissolved. I don't know what it did, but it, uh, man. Usually there's a bunch of residue from the glue. And this time there's not. The guesswork out of a neck reset makes it a whole lot more comfortable to uh, perform this surgery. Being able to see the actual pocket and the dovetail really helped me just getting a visual of it. You know, we want these drill bits, holes, to, to be on the outer edge of the dovetail. We don't want them right in the middle because there's really not no there's no glue here in the middle and you have to get pretty close you have to hold the needle up at the top edge for a little while and then down at the very bottom edge because they put glue along this whole length of this dovetail and at the gibson factory obviously they don't use a lot of glue i haven't even cleaned this up you can't even see where the glue was it doesn't look like they used glue but they sure did because it was stuck on there so, getting that right is important. The next important thing is knowing how much material we're going to be trimming off this. Just want to get an idea anyways. You don't want to overset the neck and you don't want to underset it. So, what we do is figure out, you measure the string height at the 12th fret and you get somewhere like, say you had, um, in this case we had three sixty-fourths we want it to be lowered it's it was uh looking like it was uh eight sixty-fourths on the low e and i want it to be five sixty-fourths so three sixty-fourths so how much do we take off the saddle usually if we want the string height to come down three sixty-fourths we take off three thirty seconds which is double the amount of three sixty-fourths um so we got the amount to lower the saddle is figure A, the length of the heel is figure B, and the distance from the body to neck joint to the middle of the saddle at the D string is figure C. So A times B divided by C gives us the amount to trim off of the heel. Got my dial caliper set to 0.8 millimeters which looks like 0.31 of an inch, which looks like the thickness of an eyelash, and it's not much. But we can come in and just make a little line right here. You don't want to screw up the finish too much, but um, you want to have some pretty good lighting. Also, I can see a little mark there now. There it is, right there. 0.8 millimeters in my 80 grit. Let's break off a little piece. Stick it on there. Ready to go. Hear that? That's crazy ass Nashville. Lawn mowers, emergency vehicles. Sheesh.
and get ready for some shimming. And we're gonna fit this neck onto the body permanently. I'm gonna go with a shim about this size. Two shims, really. I'll make two shims out of this skinny little piece. Cut it in half on a diagonal. And it should give me two pieces. That'll fit on either side of the dovetail. I know I've got way too much shim here, so I'm gonna just peel, I'm gonna taper that back edge. And just get rid of that whole little strip. Now that I got my maple shims on the sides of the dovetail, that's what they look like. I insert the neck as far as I can, and I've got a about an eighth of an inch gap right there. So now I'm going to have to trim back these shims, sand them, and get a really nice fit. I'll start off with some rather aggressive sanding. It's okay to take a little bit off right here too. Since I kicked the neck back like this, this inside part of the dovetail might hit the neck block. Go in with a little bit of this. Did a little remodel into the shop recently is one of the things I added was this vise with a little bit of a taper on it to hold the neck in place when I needed to do some fine tuning stuff. And it's coming in handy for this little thing here because when I drilled those two holes through the fretboard, it left them two holes. And I want to plug them up. I'm talking about those two. So next thing I do with this here mini saw and that little micro dot right there. So I got some tape on three. Tight Bond 3 with Glee. That one wasn't quite as thick. That second one came out a little better. I've touched up the dovetail in the little spots too. I mean the heel, sorry. Touched up the heel with a little lacquer. I could touch it up with a little more later or whatever, it doesn't matter. So I'm jamming that neck down into the neck block and each time I pull it out with that carbon paper stuck down in there, I get, I get these little markings. I know exactly where it's hitting. And I can come in here and scrape it off. Each time I put this neck in, it's going to leave a slightly different mark on those shims. Just 
stinky old fish glue. I like to glob it on kind of good right now. It'll squeeze out and kind of fill a few little cracks along the fretboard extension. reason to panic. So this clamp is holding the heel tight up against the body. This clamp is holding the joint together. And I'll put these two clamps on to secure the fretboard extension. Hopefully, I'd like to take a piece of metal over that fret. Nine and a half, which is just going to hit the edges of the frets, the outside edges. And come in with this clamp. Not this clamp. Yeah. that on. Let her sit for an hour. service back in service baby